I want to go ahead and play around with some vectors in GeoGebra. So I'm going to call O the origin. So this will just give us a point right at the origin. And for the rest, I'll call A a point on our x-axis. If you type in a letter instead of a number and hit enter, what this will give us is a little sliding point that we can then go back and, and play around with that x coordinate. And I will do the same with a y coordinate. So again, just filling in b. And then as soon as you hit enter, I get this nice variable with a point b that is sliding on the y axis. And 0, 0, c, you guessed it. So there's our point for the z axis. How this thing is oriented, you can always hit home and it'll bring you back to kind of this um, corner view, but you have X to the right, Y going up is kind of the 2D view, and then Z is the blue axis coming out of the board. Okay, to go ahead and make a prism around this. I'm gonna create a point on the um, XY plane. And then I'm also going to create a point on kind of the upper right hand corner of this. And there are a bunch of tools over here. Each one of these kind of has an explanation for how to use it. So if we want to go ahead and create a vector, we can either click on this and it'll say, select the starting point and then the end point, or you can come over here to algebra and you can type in those commands and it will sort of help you fill it in. So let's see, if we go from point O that was zero, 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 up to point E, that'll give us a nice line showing a vector between those points. And we should be able to come back here and kind of move our x, y, z coordinates around and see how that vector changes. The next little piece sometimes is still a little bit confusing to see where that vector is pointing. So sometimes it can be helpful to um, kind of draw a box around it. So there is cubes, which all the sides are the same, but we want a little more flexibility with that. So let's go ahead and make a generic prism. For this one, we're going to define a two-dimensional surface. So I'm going to go around on the XY plane. So I'll grab this box. And then once I complete that loop, I'm done with my two-dimensional area. The third click is going to be bringing it up to the top. Okay, so now what we have is our vector is inside of this cube. And we can kind of look at this thing straight on, straight from the top, straight from the bottom. Turn that cube visibility on and off by just clicking on it. Let me show you one other way to look at this vector, and that is to draw a triangle on the floor. So this is purely on the XYZ plane here. If you push down on your rolling button, it will allow you to zoom around it. I'm going to make another polygon that is standing straight up off the floor going up. And if you can see those two triangles, so this is, if I go ahead and turn that polygon, that prism back on again, you can kind of see where those triangles are. So I have one triangle on the floor showing the X and Y direction, and I have another triangle standing straight up off the floor. So every 3D vector, it's made out of 
two triangles, one triangle on the floor describing the x and y direction, and then another triangle standing straight up, and that shows the height of it, which is in the z direction. And if you could walk around the sides of those triangles, that is the x, y, z components of your vectors. A couple more tools to explore over here. And that is this little guy right here, angle and distance or length measurements. So GeoGebra will really kind of do all these calculations for you. I want to make sure that you can also plug these into your calculator or math software. But um, yeah, check out the calculations that this will do for you. So there's the angle for the XY triangle on the ground. We can get a similar angle for maybe the triangle that's standing up. So I'm going to go from the top here to give us maybe that, that triangle that's standing up. Try zooming in and out on this. So sometimes if you have too much writing on top of one another, remember you can just click on it to remove the information you're not interested in at the moment. But go ahead and explore all these tools so we can get the distance in the x direction, the y direction, the z direction. We have the hypotenuse of the triangle on the ground, and we have the length of the overall vector here. So how these guys are related to one another. If you look straight down on the ground, and remember we can come back up here and kind of change those distances around if we want to. So maybe we want something that's, I don't know, three in the x direction, four in the y direction, and let's do a height of five in the z direction. So you can see three, four, five triangle on the ground and a five, five, seven point oh seven triangle standing straight up. And you can see that the overall length of this thing is going to be x squared plus y squared plus z squared on the ground. Okay, one other way to think about angles that define the variables rather than those two triangles, we're going to make the angle between the coordinate system and the vector itself. So this is another 90 degree angle triangle, but this time it's going from the coordinate system directly over to the vector. And we can define the angle between the vector and the direction of the coordinate system. So these are generally cosine angles. So if you look at it, this is the adjacent side is the direction of the coordinate x, y, z, and then the hypotenuse of that triangle is the vector itself. So we can do that between the vector and any of these directions. So here's the vector to the x direction. And hopefully you can see that this is actually a 90 degree angle um, triangle. And what we're going to define this with the angle between the vector and the x-axis. So the x-axis is the adjacent side of that angle. This is going to be the length of cosine angle is that x direction. And then for the other way, so this is the third direction here. And if it helps to draw these in, you have to look at it at just the right angle to realize it's a 90 degree angle triangle. So we're coming straight off of the coordinate system up to the end of that vector. And the angle is between the vector and the coordinate system. So that's just another way to define those vectors. The best thing to do for all of this is to open up GeoGebra, try this out yourself, reorient it, and you'll start to see all the relationships and how these three-dimensional vectors are defined.